okay listen so in today's class we'll try to see some of the interview questions again uh, i think i have taken almost 15 questions if you take the first one explain system dot out dot println right means how the structure they have you have uh, like they have implemented right what is the main uh, purpose of system dot out dot println which would for the purpose of printing the data on the console and cursor move to the next line very good if you don't want to move cursor to the next line what you can do you can go with system dot out dot print method right so basically if you would like to explain this in a clear manner there is a kind of a class called print stream class is there which is available in a package called java dot long package java long package so this is a kind of a class in this class we have various kind of predefined methods are there like uh, print ln is one kind of method which used for to perform print operation and move the cursor to the next line and the print is a kind of a method which used for to print certain data like that we are going to have various kind of methods are there in the print stream class right and there is a predefined class called system with a predefined class called system in the system class they have created object of the print stream class print stream out equal to new print stream right you know how to create object using the new keyword guys is there is, is it the only one way to create the object of any kind of a class no we have almost five ways are there we can able to create object of any class in five ways one is through new operator you know right so the remaining four ways we'll try to tell in the monday class okay na fine so here print stream out equal to new print stream right and they made this as static they made this as static now if you would like to call println method from my main method right my my program is like this right class jk public static void main method of string arguments here i am trying to perform some print operation what i would like to print i would like to print as csc right then i have to pass the csc to this method how we can pass it to this method first you have to call this method how can you call this method through the object of print stream but the object of print stream is defined which class system system right out right so which means that through out object you can able to call but they made the out object as what static so all the static variables how we are going to call with respect to the class name so that is the reason we have to call with respect to the class name that class name is what system so if i mention clearly you have to call system dot out then i have uh, i am available here then i can call the println method right this is what you have to explain when somebody is, is going to ask what is the meaning of system dot out dot println method okay fine next one why signature of main method of java as public static void main and array of objects of string class right so basically if you take any kind of a class if the class is going to have this syntax from this location your program is going to start its execution right this is where your compiler will understood from here i want to start its my execution right so if you want to know the, the clear meaning of this main is generally method name a normal as like as normal method name only and they made it as void because main method is not responsible for anyone as i am not responsible for anyone i no need to make it respect to data type instead simply i will make it as void means i am not going to return not going to return anything means simply i can say it as nothing main method won't return anything i can make it as void and why they made it as static it is meant for as the main method is going to the first executable statement main method is the first executable statement if it is not a kind of a static keyword not a kind of static keyword then how 
compiler will execute the main method. Generally, if the, if it, if the non-static method, how it is going to be executed through objects. But if it is just if it is non-static, we have to first create object. Then who is creating the object first? There is no one, right? No one is available to create the object. That's the reason they made this as static. Hope you understood, right? So the reason why static is if there is no static keyword, we have to call with respect to the object. But here the question is who will create the object before executing the main method, right? Yes. Compile itself won't create the object by itself. It has to call with respect to the class name. So that's the reason we are going to say that something like Java space file name, JK, something like that. If you are going to execute it, through this one, they will call the method name. JK dot main. Like that, right? Fine. Next, why they made as public? As this should be executed by anyone, it has to be made as public. So it has to be accessed by anyone. Accessed by anyone. So they made as public and you have to remember one more thing. It is going to always accept array of objects of string class. Why they made only specifically array of objects of string class? Because strings can be easily converted to any data type, right? So it is easy for developer to convert from string data type to any other data type. But if you mention integer, it is not possible to mention string data type into integer or float data type integer, that is the reason they made only usage of string arguments. Okay now, hope you understood it clearly. Next one, can we overload main method of Java? Answer is purely yes. First, what is the meaning of overloading? Same signature, same signature, but it may vary with different type of points. One is order of parameters, type of parameters, number of parameters. Based on these three types, based on three types, we can say a method is going to be overload method or not, right? For example, if we say, if I try to take uh, one particular example, let me create one class, something like interview class name is interview questions, right? Here it is going to have main method, you know its syntax public static void main method of string arcs. I am trying to print this out of main method statement, main method statement, right? So what is the meaning of method of overloading? I am going to have same statement public static void main of, I am trying to change its parameter. Indian. Is it a overload method or not? Yes. Different parameters. So, but count of parameters is same or not here? Count of parameters. Can I do like this? Static void main int n comma int k. Can I do like this or not? Yes. So, I don't want to print anything. This is out of main method with two parameters, two parameters, this out of method with single parameter, single parameter, right? So here you can understood, so it is going to, even though it is going to have same number of arguments, it is going to vary with data type. If you take these two, it is going to vary with number of arguments and there will be one more uh, thing is there, order of the parameter, right? So, order of the parameters can vary. If we take here int k, can I write the same thing like this? Int k, is it available? It is possible? No. Right? So, can I go with the string k? Data is varying, right? Here also, I can make use of string n. This is what the meaning of order of the parameters, right? So, if you are able to clearly observe, there is a main method is there and there are overload main methods are there. Is it allowed? Yes. But out of, out of these four main methods, which main method is going to be executed? Which will have the exact syntax of the Java, public static void main, which is going to accept array of objects of string class. Okay now. So this is the executable code. Hope you understood clearly. Fine. So can we overload the main method of Java? 
answer is purely yes next can we call main method of a class from another class can we call main method of a class from another class no or yes just think it answer is going to be yes simply but if you want to call the main method what is required it has to have its same syntax it has to have its exact syntax right if you, if you observe the example for example let me try to create there is a class called class name is jk jk and it's going to have main method sys out of jk class is it the main method or not yes now can i call this main method from this class yes obviously it, it can call can i call like this uh, how how it will can call as the jk class main method is what static how can i call it class name jk dot main and it is expecting what array of objects of string class right can i can i pass something like uh, jk dot main of five no it it won't pass it, it is expecting the exact thing for example string hello equal to new string of some five can i pass now hello yes it is expecting array of objects of string class now are you going to call it or not yes there is no problem at all so now what is the output you are going to expect main method statement and jk class main method statement and jk class also it is going to print so the answer for this is yes okay na fine next print your name without using semicolon in the program right you have to write a java program where it should not use any kind of semicolon in order to print something it's not only about name whatever it might be no it is not possible or it is is it possible right guys just think about that uh, writing a statement inside the if block inside this block if you are going to write something if i write a statement definitely it has to end with semicolon i am not going to write anything but can i make some statement as condition so that you know you are not going to allow to write semicolon again just think about it can i write system dot out dot println but println method written type is what if you observe the println method Printl method type, written type is what? Void, right? But if you take the if case, if case, so so let me make them as comments. So it is possible to write. It is possible to write in variety of ways, sir. Right? So inside if statement, I am going to have certain kind of condition. So the condition is something like true condition. Or it can be a kind of false condition. Whatever it might be, right? Inside method, you know, it write anything, just empty. But instead of this true case or false case, I am. I would like to print the data. If you like to print the data, definitely have to go with the sys out. Sys out, right? Sys out something like this. Control X. Here I will paste. It is going to throw an error. Why it is throwing an error? Because it is it is uh, returning void value, but If condition is written, it is it is expecting what type of type? Boolean expecting, right? So there is one method is there. Printf method is there. Printf method is this. So which is used for the various other ways. So for that we can able to compare with the null value. Printf of let me take as hello. Is there any error so far for you? No. There is no error. right which is generally used for print stream only print stream output stream are the class are there right at that locations we are going to use all this kind of things right if you are going to execute it now what is the output you are going to expect you are going to expect the output as hello in place of this also 
you can go with the another one as appendum append also allow which is important append is also allow okay na so this is the way you can go with the printing something without using semicolon the program right have you used any where semicolons no we haven't used anyway that is uh, way you can able right simply the logic is you can go with writing in inside if statement okay next one uh, explain encapsulation pojo and the java bin encapsulation means it's it's a kind of a class where you are going to have private data members and for those public setters and getters setters and getters right so if you remember the class exactly you can able to def define this one we can generally call it as wrapping up of wrapping up of similar kind of data simply right so here pojo means we can abbreviate it as plain old java object plain old java object right so generally if you take any kind of a class what you have written so far where it can be encapsulation class where it may be normal class where it may be any kind of a class that generally will be treated as that generally will be treated whose object as pojo so for this class for example if you take jk jk j equal to new jk now this j is a pojo plain old java object that's it means the general class what you are trying to write for that class if you are going to create the object that object we call it as plain old java object that's it okay na so now if you are able to observe this one right earlier uh, we are trying to create the object right so something anywhere if you are going to create the object that object we call it as pojo only means there are no restrictions there are no restrictions in writing the class then i can call it as a pojo but there are few restrictions are there something like data should be private and method should be compulsory public setters and getters then i can call it as encapsulation coming to java bin java bin it is going to have more restrictions some compare it to encapsulation one thing is it should have compulsory private data members first and foremost important point private data members and all the methods should be public public and it has to have public public no argument constructor it should have public no argument constructor right which means that there are no parameters here right even you are not going to write it is it going to have default constructor or not is default constructor will comes under no argument constructor or not yes so that's the reason there is no problem to uh, con consider this one also but as part of example you are you have to define there should be compulsory public no argument constructor and one more important point the class should be serializable the class should implements serializable so serializable is a kind of an interface which is used for the purpose of serialization which is for the purpose of serialization anyhow uh, the meaning of again serialization and deserialization i will try to take in the monday class again right which is uh, important one only when you are trying to transfer data from our uh, application to the network or our application to the some kind of file then we will, we need to serialize the object that is what we call as serialization so in order to achieve the serialization concept compulsory it should be implemented with the serializable interface right so here java bin is simple nothing but private data members public setters and getters it should have no argument constructor and the class should implement with the serializable keyword that's it okay now so this is the difference between encapsulation pojo and the java bin is it okay for everyone yes. next one simple one what are the types of inheritances single inheritance multi 
level inheritance very good multiple inheritance is there yes hierarchical inheritance is there hybrid inheritance is there right simple inheritance means we are going to have two classes one is the parent one is the act as a parent class one will act as a child class right here uh, right i am trying to revise everything right so here class a class b extends a that's it class b extends a then it is what kind of relationship between these two single end is okay what kind of relationship parent child relationship or we can say it as is a relationship is a relationship very good right yes. so here a will call it as parent class or i can call it as super class whereas b i will call it as child class or sub class or derived class what about the parent class i can call it as base class you have to remember this term always right yes. so single inheritance multi level inheritance means we are going to have single base class and single derived class in between we are going to have multiple intermediate base classes and multi level inheritance means we are trying to inherit from multiple parent classes into single derived class we are going to get the concept called multiple inheritance but this multiple inheritance is not going to be supported hierarchical inheritance single base class multiple derived classes i can call it as hierarchical inheritance hybrid means it is a combination of any valid four inheritances okay now fine next why multiple inheritance is not supported in java is it really not supported no it is going to support it it is going to support it through interfaces it is going to support it through interfaces but it is not supported through the classes right the reason is so if you go with the example clear example so that you can get the clarity class multiple inheritance right here i am going to have class uh, let me call uh, as dog class is dog and the other class is let me call the cat both are going to have assume uh, why uh, sleep method is there is out of dog sleeping dog sleeping and i am trying to take the same method cat sleeping and i am trying to execute it where i am trying to perform uh right so you are trying to perform inheritance right when you are trying to perform inheritance you have to go with extends keyword extends dog comma cat right so as the iterator is not supported directly so we can't able to show here right but if you are going to clearly observe if it is going to allow extends dog comma cat what will happen basically in the inheritance all the methods are going to be logically available am i right when they are logically available if somebody will call the sleep method somebody will call the sleep method using multiple inheritance m equal to new multiple inheritance m dot sleep method m dot sleep method compiler will get confused whether i want to call dog sleep method or cat sleep method that is the reason why multiple inheritance is not going to be supported in java language through so the concept of classes but will it support through the concept of interface or not yes it will be supported through the concept of interfaces so to remove the error i just made it as Huh? Why the error not yet resolved? We haven't written the main method. Okay. Okay, fine. Next, 
will go with the next one. Can a class extend itself? Can a class extend itself? Nadik is the author. Answer is no. It is not possible to extend the class itself. It is not only with respect to the class, it can be kind of interface also. Can an interface extend itself? Answer is no. It could not possible. No need, right? If you want to extend, what is the, what is the reason to extend itself? If you want to use it, we can go with the same class again and again in inheritance. Next one, which class in Java is super class of every other class? Good. Object is the super class for all kind of classes in Java. Right? So, as it is super class, it will support various kind of methods. Among those, uh, can, can you give some of the methods what are supported by this uh, object class? Which we already know. One is equals method. Right? Because when an interviewer will ask the question, immediately they will ask, right? What are the various kind of methods that are supported by object? Equals method. So, when you are trying to compare the content of the data strings, then I can go with the equals method. Any other things are there? Two string method is there, which you refer to convert the given number into string format. Integer dot two string, float dot two string, double dot two string. We are going to use it, right? Two string is a method which is a, which is available in the class called object class. And while working with interthread communication, we come up with the wait method. Notify, notify all. These are the three methods that are supported by object again. And if you remember the clearly, this method is there. Finalize method is there, right? Finalize method is a kind of common method available in the object class. Who will call the finalize method? Garbage character, very good. GC method. The method name is uh, GC method again, right? GC method is something like a kind of acting as a garbage character. So, which is going to run at the background of the Java program, which will internally call the finalized method. If, it, if any free memory is there, it will execute, otherwise, it will not execute the finalized method. And something like that, we are going to have various kind of methods are there, something like again clone method is there. Clone method and uh, some other kind of things, which is common uh, hash code method is there. So, anyhow, the terminals is what you do not know, we will try to take in the Monday class. Clone I will take in the Monday class and what I have explained, uh, some of the things are going to take serialization, all those things will take in the Monday class, okay, no? etc. So, but for the question, which class in Java is super class of every other class means object simply. How inheritance is achieved in Java? By using is only the extension keyword or any other way? You have to say two answers. That is why I have included through extends keyword or by implementing the interfaces, we can achieve the concept of inheritance. So, can you explain the ternary operator, which will work like if uh, if if case if else case, right? If condition else followed by block of statements. For this alternative is ternary operator, right? Whatever the condition is there. That condition you are going to write, followed by question mark. If the condition is true, it is going to execute the block of code. Else block you are going to mention with the colon operator like this. Right? Okay now. So this is the ternary operator. Next, can you explain the default keyword? Default keyword very observed. No, in access modifier that is not the default keyword. We are not going to write anything. It will be assumed as default. It is not the default keyword. But you are going to use the default keyword some locations in Java. Can we use at switch case? In switch cases, are you going to use it or not? Right. In switch case, we are going to use the default keyword. Right. Means when all the conditions are failed. When all the cases cases are failed, then default 
statement is going to be executed. This is where we are going to use a default keyword. And somewhere, recently we have come across with interfaces. In interfaces, we have a, a method called default method. Default method. We can go with the keyword called default keyword. Right? Next one, what is constructor chaining? What is constructor chaining? What is the meaning of a constructor? Same with the class name and having a written type or not? There will be no written type. Can it, can it uh, uh, throw exceptions? Important one. Can the constructor throw exceptions? Can constructor throws exception? Answer is yes. Right? If you are able to clearly clearly execute, constructors will throw exceptions somewhere. And these won't return in any in, 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 in value. Won't return any values. And can have access modifiers. Am I right? Can have access modifiers. So then, okay, what is the meaning of constructor chaining then? So, communication over multiple constructors, can we call it as constructor chaining? Communication over multiple constructors, we can call it as constructor chain. How can we communicate the constructors? What is the need of again inheritance? Can we overload the constructors? Overload the constructor? Yes, we can overload the constructor. What is the need of making the object creation? Again, in constructor chaining, we have this method is there and super method is there. Through these two, we can achieve the constructor chaining. Am I right? So, if you are able to observe this particular example, uh -huh. anywhere I, will, I am trying to modify at the 14th line here itself. Right? So, I am going to create a constructor. Constructor and sys out of sys out of default constructor. Okay, and then I am going to create one more constructor here itself, which is accepting single parameter as nothing. Sys out of single parameter constructor. Single parameter constructor. Is it allowed or not? Yes. Then how how this is going to be communicated? Then this of if I pass the value, will it is going to be will it going to be uh, passed? What is the error that you are going to get? I have given this rule also, right? When you are going to use the this method and super method, those should be always first line. Right. So now, if you are going to execute, what the outputs we are going to get? Default constructor and single parameter. Oh, first, you are going to get single parameter, then you are going to get uh, default constructor. Right. So now, from this one, can I call another constructor? Yes or no? Right. For example, if I say super of 5, again you are going to throw an error, it should be the first line. It should be the first line, but the constructor dog of int is not defined, right? That's why it is throwing an error, right? But if you go with the con, uh, dog class, you can write dog of int n, int n, sys out of dog single parameter, single parameter, right? Now, how it is going to be get? Dog single parameter, single parameter, default constructor, right? So, are you going to observe how they are going to be communicated? We are going to simply call one, uh, we are trying to create an object. That object uh, constructor is going to call internally by one, one constructor with another constructor, right? You can able to communicate over super classes or you can able to communicate within the class. Can I write like super dot super something like that? No, it is not possible to write all those things. Good. That is what we call it as a constructor chaining. Okay, now fine. 
So next, we'll go with the, write the difference between array and array list. Can, can you define some of the differences? So clearly, if you mention, there are many differences are there, array and array list, right? We have seen the concept of collections, right? So arrays are going to be fixed size. One thing, int i of brackets equal to new int of 500, which means that it is going to have fixed size. Can array list is going to be in uh, global nature? These are going to be in variable size. Variable, right? So, as number of elements are going to be added, it is going to array list is going to be in extendable. I can say it as global size. How much size it is going to be extendable? 3n by 2 plus 1. If it is a kind of vector, it array list is going to be 3n by 2 plus 1. If it is a vector, 100%. By default, 10 elements it can store. I have shown the example, right? What is the, uh, like, do we need to pass array size here? Do we need to pass the array size in arrays? We have to pass array size definitely. But whereas coming to array list, is there any necessity to pass the array size? No need of passing array size. And what might be the value so is going to store in arrays? Same, int something if you mention, it is going to store only integer data, right, right? So here it is going to store only specific values, homogeneous values you can say. Whereas coming to array list, it is going to store objects. It is going to store data in the form of objects. Even you are trying to specify specific type of values like integer, they are going to store only objects. And how we are going to process the arrays? By using for loop can we process? By using any kind of loops, for loop, while loop, all those things we can able to easily process. But coming to array list, is it possible to iterate over uh, array list? We have to go with uh, iterators. Iterators, right? Can we go with the for loop? We can't go with the for loop. Can I go with the for each? Yes. We can go with the for each. Any other differences are there? Right? So, these are the some of the differences that you can able to observe the, between arrays and the array list. Okay, now. Any doubts? Right? If you don't have any doubts, uh, we can stop here.